Good morning, Good morning. Christ Chapel, Long Beach, family members, EFAM. We apologize. Good morning to those all on social media as our our beautiful and wonderful doctors back there. We have two doctors back there. <laughs> we got the doc back there. We got doc. See, see she's back there. So surgery and the other one's talking to all the cameras. Fantastic. That is fabulous. Yes. You guys like Thank you for being patient, you know, trying to get started sometimes. You've got technical difficulties, but that's okay yeah, because yeah. the Holy Spirit doesn't have technical difficulties. Yeah. Holy Spirit moves as it should, Absolutely. and we're obedient to that. So good Absolutely. morning, good morning. Amen. I'm just going to jump in and we're going to open up with prayer so we can get on with getting on. We have so, an announcement we need to make. Oh, we, we have an announcement. Yes, we just apologize. Yes. Uh, there is a like a progress bar and some uh you know extra features on the screen uh oh. we are still working on getting rid of it but think of it as progress you know in our lives progress yeah. to be able to Come reach on. the lord you know exactly Correct. exactly Correct. so we are Correct. almost at a hundred percent y'all so. super so i'm i'm hearing from you that what you're saying this is a chance and an opportunity to learn and grow absolutely. in ways that we didn't think absolutely so by waiting for that progress bar that's exceptional i'm going to shift over here and so uh sweetheart are we should I go ahead and do the the prayer, or we were just waiting a little bit longer? Okay, fantastic. All right, those on social media, those here in the this little uh, gathering that we have, let's just open our hearts, open up, take a deep breath because we need to ground ourselves. So take a deep breath, inhale, and then slowly exhale. Okay, here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for all the things you're teaching us right now about patience, about waiting, sitting still and waiting for you to set everything up for us as we go forward. Thank you for those out on social media who are being patient and those here in the room with us today. Bless us, breathe on us, move in a mighty way. Show your power and your will as we dive into your word and we open ourselves and our perspective to what you have. Because your rays are greater than ours. We're willing and we're obedient to receive any and every message going forward, Heavenly Father. Continue to open up our hearts. Continue to help us to wait, to stay still, to stand firm in your word. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for bringing Jesus as he's a salvation and savior. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with open hearts and minds. Rescue us from ourselves in this world by showing us your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. Amen. Let's learn. Amen. Well. Good morning. Good morning. Coach, I think with prayer like that, you should think about the end of Sunday school. Oh. Just, just, just. Okay, don't try to do challenge now. Just, just putting it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> welcome you back to Adele Sunday School here at Christ Chapel. <clears throat> And let's just address the elephant in the room. Okay, so when he was sick, two things happened. My hair got really wavy in the front, and I grew in a black mustache because my beard was Woo! super gray, and it just started to grow in. And I'm like, let's just go with it. So. <laughs> Strange, yeah. trust me, stranger things have happened. <laughs> oh, the third thing, I'm sweating like, oh, I know yeah. tomorrow we have a little while. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so we're going to be again a new series on conquerors yeah. and Christ. And before we get into our anchor verse, for the series, let's just toss out a question. Meaning, <clears throat> can you think of any life experience times in your life where you have felt overwhelmed or conquered, if you will? 
and eat time in your life. Overwhelm, conquer, denounce, and end. I felt the most overwhelmed in my entire life when my mother died. That was it. I've been through other things, any health challenges, or anything else. But when my mother died, that was it. That was the most challenging I've ever had in my entire life. Go ahead. Well, I um, have faced a lot of challenges in my life, many, and um, I think the biggest one was being a mother of 22 of two children and being alone with no support, but as always, you know, God has always saved me, so... But, you know, that's a very overwhelming feeling because I had no experience. I married at 16 and a half, and I had to fight for everything. So that, I think that was the most challenging thing that I did in my life. Amen. Anyone else? For me, was when I was taking care of my grandmother while I was working 12-hour days, and my mother had broke her arm and her leg, and I was having to go to work at 4 a.m., get off at 4, and then go take care of my grandma and then run to the, my mom was in a rehab facility, and kind of come fill all of that into one day. That, that was overwhelming for me, but with God's strength, obviously I made it through. Yep. Anyone else uh, ever? Taryn Terrence online says overwhelmed is an understatement right now. And that's true. A lot of us don't know that everyone else is going through something, right? We all have stuff. And uh, Terrence, we're praying for you. For, for me, the most the time I was most overwhelmed in my life was after my mother died. Because after my mother died, my nephew and my mother, who lived my mother since two years old, um, had come live with me. And he was schizophrenic. 16, and it was the most overwhelming time period. I mean, but it's all worked out, and it's getting better every day. But that was just overwhelming. Okay, let's turn a question to this a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so when we feel overwhelmed or conquered, typically, what are some of the ways we might react? What are some of the ways? And friend. Sometimes when you're overwhelmed, you will sometimes act inappropriately. Um, in the beginning, sometimes if something is just dropped in, a, in your lap, I don't think, I can say for myself, I don't, there was times that I didn't immediately pray. And sometimes I could have responded inappropriately with my behaviors or with my words. Now I know to try to take a breath so that um, I can't allow God to order our steps. But um, I, I'm just saying for me, things in the past, I didn't always act appropriately when things happened. I, uh, I was in such a deep fog, I couldn't even think about what to do. I just was numb. But eventually I got myself to counseling. I went to counseling, through counseling to try to get myself together. Uh, I also started, when I immediately found out, I went to church. And... Uh, I, it was instinctively, I just figured, okay, well, I need to go to church. I need to pray. I need to do something. I need to reach out to God for some kind of way, with some kind of strength. But after that, I, when I, the clarity started coming, I said, okay, well, I need to find some counseling. I need to go to somewhere where somebody can help me. Because all I could think about was joining her. That was my predominant feeling. I just wanted to join my mother. Wherever she was, I was going. And 
I knew that that was impractical because I had a child that was nine years old looking at me like, you're falling all apart. I need you. <laughs> so I just, uh, so I tried my very best to uh, get it together, but it was definitely not easy. What else? How else do we typically react when we feel overwhelmed or contrary? I think um, what comes to mind is being angry. Angry, depressed, anxious, and trying to blame somebody for what was happening to me. But I think some, some of the stuff that we go through our actions are at play in this movement. So we gotta think and um, what am I doing wrong? What can I do to fix it? Um, and I will always come to the feet of God for help. <laughs> me is um, questioning why? Why me? Why is this happening? Why? 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 My big thing is trying. I want answers. I want to know why. Why is this happening? Why am I going through this? Why do I feel anxiety over it anyway? Why am I stressing out? Why for me? A big thing. My wife is full of tons of tiny little comments this morning. It's kind of funny. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it too. Her hair is beautiful. Her hair is beautiful, so she can jump off and have a positive thought. Okay. Positive affirmation. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I, I really can identify with what you said about asking why and the thing that I have learned over the years and even though I still do it today and I'm unable sometimes to stop myself from asking why is I get worried about the why instead of refocused on what God is asking me to do and that's one of the toughest things when those times are so super overwhelming you know and I have found too if, as I look at the people all around in this room um, I have found that going to those who have come before me, right, been there, done that, that, um, you know, I'm able to find at least a different perspective that helps me to think about it a little more, you know, because it is some of those things where it's like I was watching something this morning that talked about um, sometimes your blessing, God has it hidden for a certain reason. And that situation that we're in is so overwhelming because God is trying to say, no. This is not something that is going to be announced to the world. This is something you're going to carry. And what you've got hidden inside you right now is used for my purpose only. No one else needs to see it. No one else needs to go through it. No one else needs to hear about it. No one else needs to cover it. Nothing like that. And, you know, that's where I don't, I try not to do it on my own. Right. So I'll call Minister Fran. I'll call Pastor Jim. You know, I'll, I'll send just a love note to my M&Ms, you know what I mean? Just to get myself feeling better. And those are the types of things that when you refocus, you know, because you and I are a lot alike when it comes to stuff like that. When I can then refocus what God has before me, even though I may not know what it is, right? And even right. though I may be overwhelmed by the why right now, when I can refocus is when I start to feel God's presence. Um, I feel like this kind of goes back to my worship night message because, I mean, especially last year, I was super overwhelmed. It was like my best and worst year where I had so much fun. I had, I met great people, but, but, and, but at times I felt really conquered and it, what really helped is looking at it instead of taking it personal because often we become victims. Well, this is happening to me or what did I do to deserve this? And instead of looking at it, okay, well, God's maybe removing this. Right. And he's, he's, okay. he's prepping me to be overwhelmed here because later he's yes. gonna, I'm going to be able to handle a situation right. later right. that may seem way more overwhelming, but by the time I get there, Come it's on. not going to feel. Right. It's like lifting weights. You know, yes. he, you go up and wait each time and it's painful. It's a yep. negative. Yep. But at the end of it, you're strong. I, my little legs are lifting 130 pounds now. Oh, no. 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 They were at 70, and I've been sore. It's been hurting to go upstairs, Come but on. it's taking me apart and putting me back yeah. together in his eyes. Yeah. On that workout thing, you have to get weak first in order to get strong because lifting weights is tearing of the muscles. 
So when you're tearing those oh, muscles nice. and you're working those yeah. muscles, you know, that really, it, it does. It strips our body down. It strips the muscle down. And then the more we do it, the more we use it, the muscle gets used to it. And you end up getting a lot stronger. And then when we go through the things, again, other things, we're more equipped, right? So good morning, everyone. There is my voice is extra deep today because I screamed too much yesterday. <laughs> my my um, my take on this is um, there is times when we well God tells us to begin with that He's not going to give us a weight that we cannot carry, right? And sometimes we don't get that. Sometimes we um, I being like face on the floor where all the doors that we knock on open and. It's just oh, for a while I felt like I was the angel of death. Everybody that was dying would come to me before they died. My mom died in my arms. My dad, you know, I was looking just last week was um, um, you know the uh, anniversary one year of my dad passing, and uh, my bro, my uh, I mean just a lot of people, right? And in that moment, in that moment, this is my thing. In that moment, you have to surrender. You have to surrender, like when you when you um, when you're gonna pass out, mm -hmm. when you're just like you're just like oh, I can't, I can't. Right, right. And when, when your body surrenders and your spirit, your soul surrenders, God takes over mm -hmm. because you are letting you telling him, you're telling him um, I can't do this, and and when you let him work, then things just start happening. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't have the strength, it wasn't me. In that moment when my mom was on my arms and I was singing songs to her, any human being would be crying and feeling sad. And I was joyful, there was angels around, I could feel there was angels around and I was just talking to my mom, reading the Bible, singing songs and stuff. It was a beautiful, enlightening moment where I, I cannot express it. We're, we're going across the border, it, I'm in uh, USA to Mexico, and there's soldiers and stuff as we're going in. And I have a, a oxygen tank for my mom, and, and she's right here on my arms in the back seat. And oh, and um, and we're like, oh my God, they're gonna stop us and tell us, you know, why didn't you get an ambulance? You know, because there's legal things that you know procedures that that the world expects you to do in moments like that because you're in danger. She's not comfortable. Whatever. Right. It was like a big giant angel. Was like right before us and the uh, immigration officers, and they just went. I cried mm -hmm. in that moment of joy because I was fearful. Doctor told me, she said, um, "If your mom passes on the way, you need to stop and let authorities know." And mom was not talking. She was she was she was still warm, but she was not talking. Oh, and we made it home, and we put her on bed and I got on my I got on my knees and I told my brothers go inside this is your time I took two hours on the road this is your time brother. and I went outside the room and I just got on my knees but those moments you just surrender you just surrender you surrender everything don't don't fight it don't try to find the answer the why the this that surrender all and put all in his hands because he is the only one that's gonna pull you through this yes you can run, you can cry, you can hit your head. Nothing is going to change unless you surrender. Mm -hmm. And I've also heard people um, say when they're going through things, God doesn't love me. How come he doesn't love me? And then I'll, I'll try to like be encouraging and show things in my life where I've gone through things and this and that, but then they still question God's love. So I like to refer to Romans 830, 835 through 37. It says, can anything ever, ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for the sake we, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. But I, sometimes people will question God's love. Oh, I don't want them to. Yeah. 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 Okay. <clears throat> so we've been talking about when we feel overwhelmed 
or conquer in just one long side quest. And sometimes when we feel that way, what are some of the things we turn to when we feel overwhelmed? What are some of the things that we turn to? <laughs> oh, everybody know what I used to, well, most people know what I used to do. I used to turn to chocolate. And Pastor Jim told me one day, he said, you got to put the big G before Godiva. And uh, that's what I used to do. But now I know that I can go to him. But what's even more special is that God manifests himself through each and every one of you. And I know that uh, I have a sister and I don't even talk to her on, a, on the phone monthly. But anytime that I'm going through anything, I can look at Debbie. And Debbie could just automatically... God just puts her in the position to, to listen, to help, to direct. I ain't got to say something. There was one time I needed her so much, and I was trying to get to her, trying to get to her, and God said, you know what? You got this. I put people in your life for a reason, but sometimes I want you to lean on me. And that's something that what we've got to learn to do because he manifests in each and every one of us. You know what I'm saying? So you can't feel like you're alone, but then there are sometimes you got to be a big boy and sometimes you got to be a big girl and sometimes you just got to go straight to him. But when I can't get to him, I thank God that I can get to you, Ty. I thank God I can get a hug, Jean. I thank God I can get words of encouragement online, Olga. You, you know, that's love. That's the encouragement and that's the support that we give each other. And sometimes we don't recognize that this is all of God's manifestations. Um, one thing that I do, well, it goes either way for me. I either get really mad and do all the things or I laser and do nothing. Like that's, that's typically what I do. But what I will say is these days, I have people I can call when I'm freaking out. Last week, people could see it all over my face. I was not having it. But I got here, and that's that, that's been my biggest thing, because a lot of times, we blame God. We're like, well, all these things are happening to me. It's all his fault, you know? And then we avoid church, and that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to put us so far down into the ground. I was watching the Barbie movie. She was, like, laying on her face, and I'm like, I've been there. You know? She's like, I've never felt this slow, but... You know, yes, you can be on the ground, but get on your knees here. You know, he wants you to to meet with him when you're feeling that way. And the way I react is I realize, like, I have a lot of friends, and I've had friends I've gone to. But as of lately, I can't go to those friends because they're the advice they're going to give me is of the world. Right. They're going to, you know, the advice they're going to they're going to give me, you know, yeah. well, react this way, do this, get your revenge, you know, oh, and. Yeah. For me, it's like, okay, you know what, let me stop, let me not, and let me call someone who will give me wisdom, who yeah. will pray with me, who will anoint my head with oil, who will stand yes. at the front lines of this enemy on, that's coming against me and fight with the blood of Christ right. versus the spite of the devil. Okay. Yeah. I always tell Ty, I'll be like, I need some Christianly advice right now. Right. That's what I think. Yep. <laughs> so I know how to handle it. Jesus handle it, or else I'm going to. I always tell people you're lucky that I'm a God fearing Christian woman. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, hey everyone, I'm, I'm Jack. Anyone yeah. has met me yet? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of how to put my thoughts out there, but yeah, this kind of hits home for me. Um, so last week, I think. I think some of you know because I've spoken a few times, um, and I don't want to talk too long, but like the bullet points would be kind of grew up, you know, probably some a lot of people, a lot of prejudice, a lot of hate, a lot of estrangement, living on your own for a long time from a very young age. 
um, ended up falling into crowds consistently of people who are uh, taking their overwhelm as we're talking about it and putting it in the wrong things, which was primarily like drugs. Um, and I think I mentioned one time here how I was struggling with that for a really long time. And it wasn't until I had this kind of come to Jesus moment where I was like, God, please help me to overcome this. And it was only until then that my cravings were going down and I, I went, you know, I was like, whoa, I can't believe I just went two weeks without, you know, smoking a huge bowl of weed or I can't believe it's been a month. Like I could never do that before. Um, but yeah, just kind of fast forwarding, uh, one of my friends who I've known like my whole life, um, just ended up dying last week. Um, he ended up taking his own life. Um, and this is a crowd that I've known forever that I haven't been hanging out with because kind of like Emerald was saying, like, I'm not, I, it's hard to hang out with people who kind of are taking you back to those things that you don't, you don't want to be doing anymore. And it was just crazy because I had so many people come to stay at my house this whole last week. Um, and there were all these old homies of mine and it's like, everybody is just plastered, wasted, just high, high up past the ceiling, just totally rolling. Everybody's just doing drugs, super whacked out of their minds. And it's like, man, this is how our friend just died. Like he, he was totally strung out and ended up throwing himself off the, off the balcony. And it's like, and yet everybody's here. And when they get to my house, they're like, do you have any weed? Do you have any alcohol? Do you have any this? Do you have any that? We need something. We need something. Like everybody's so anxious and rowdy and needs something. And um, yeah, and it was it was interesting because like I actually had some old stuff. You know, I don't know like people go through stages or whatever. They have their own way with it. And I had a box of stuff that was packed way up in my attic that was like stuff I hadn't thrown away, but stuff I wasn't using. And I went out and I got it for them because you know I was conflicted about that but it's like I could tell they were really miserable and like almost like in agony like they were having like withdrawal like they were sick they were like sick and so I gave it to them and they just started rifling through it and just just getting super smacked and then all of a sudden everybody was feeling better and I was watching it happen and I was like wow that's what I used to look like and I, I don't know how to explain it, but I just, it just hit me. It was like, man, that used to be me. Like, I used to be that desperate. I used to be that hooked. I used to be that, like, you know, weak. And um, right. and then they're like, do you want any? And it's like, no, I don't want any. But, man, I can't even, like, fathom. Like, when I think back, it's like, I could never see people getting really high and getting drunk and doing all these drugs and not want to partake. Like I could never say no. That was always my thing. It's like, you put it in my face, I can't say no, like, you know? And so it was interesting to see all these people just like so smacked in my house and like all week. And I just like, my heart was breaking for them. And it's the same rhetoric like you were talking about, Mandy, where it's like, if I were to, you know, when I'm like bringing up God or like they see my Bible or they see you know, all my little stuff now and they're like, oh, it's like, do you like pray and stuff? It's like mm -hmm. interesting. And then they hit you with these questions like, well, then why would he let that bus crash with all those kids? Oh, yeah. Why would he do this? Why would he do that? And it's like, wow, there's so much animosity here towards God. Yeah. And um, and just that desperation and that weakness. And it's like they need him so bad, but they're not there yet. But it, it reminded me that I was there too. And I just feel really blessed now because I really feel like God came after me. Uh -huh. Like okay. he just kept coming at yeah. yeah. The least I can do is try my hardest to spend the rest of my life coming up with him. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm, nice. not, I'm not perfect, you know what I mean? Like, I still get super overwhelmed where it's oh, like, yeah. yeah, man, you know, it has been like a couple months. Like, I can't believe I can go a couple months without having a little puff of weed. Like, it blows my mind still. But then I will. It's like, you know what? Yeah. Today's the day. I can't handle this today. But then you just recognize, like, there's been times where, like, I've gotten just a little high, and I'm like, oh man, I hate this. Yeah. I hate that I'm here. You know? Like, I feel like. No so fear. Yeah. I feel like I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, yeah, it's a journey. It's okay to still fall down and 
get overwhelmed and then yeah you just keep trying and, yeah. and you know it's like i almost said like you're at, you don't realize it sometimes when you're circling the, the drain but yeah. it's actually a spiral and you're kind of like you actually are kind of climbing up but you gotta stick with it what's the pro what's the, just a quick just a quick question what's the process that he just finished talking about what's the process called being, being the process of sanctification the process of becoming holy because god is holy and i think that's important it's not about perfection it's about being in this process and that's growth that's what god wants us to be and i just want to say really quick i, I like how you said god came after you he was chasing yeah. after you it, it really breaks my heart that my old childhood <laughs> friend was conquered to completion and like that haunts me um so if anybody could have a prayer for them and all the rest of those people they're so yeah. lost like please okay. i just want to piggyback real quick i know you're saying because i've been there i i had i gave up drinking so i'm like i've gone out with friends I'm just sitting there. It's so sad because you're like, they're so lost. Like these people are so lost. But what I've decided is, is like, I'm going to be the example. I'm going to be the example for all my friends. I'm going to be the one that I can be in those places. Jesus went to those places, but he didn't do those things, you know? And it's nice to go there and not want to, like not crave it. And I'm almost like, I should just, I could have been asleep. You know, but, but it's also nice because my friends have said, you know, I really admire that you can go out and you're, you don't want to. I'm like, yeah, there's there's no point in even watching some of these because I'm a I'm a regular person, so I won't go to the same place. I'm like, some of these people have been here ten years. Yeah. I and just going in circles, and it's cool because of my thing this year is like I want to be the example for my friends, the light, the one that can bring them back, the one they can come to. That's not going to send them to the world with their advice, Amen. you know, and not judge them. I'm not going right. to judge you. Go ahead. I'm not going to hand it to you. But if you want to, I'm not going to judge you for it. And so that's the way to look at it. It's like, I'm being the example. I was just going to say this. The reason why so many people are adamant about judging the church today, you know why? Because the church has been adamant about judging people. Right. And it's not their place. We're, what God calls us to do is he calls us to share the good news. He calls us to share about God's grace and God's mercy and how he loves us so much that he paid a ransom so that we could be made right in the sight of God. That's the message, but that has not been the message um, you know, for a very long time coming from the church. So now you have the world going, oh, you're going to judge us. Well, we're going to judge you, and we're going to blame God for what's going on in this world. You know, instead of looking at the reality that when sin came in and this, the, the world became, you know, the, the kingdom of the enemy, then that's what happens. Well, I was just telling, I was just telling a friend how when I was in, when I was growing up in the UPC, how they were saying, they taught us to fear the devil, not to fear God, not to right. trust God. They wanted to. We were stomping on a devil carpet. They wanted us to be scared of it, yeah. being scared of hell. They had like a whole production every Halloween to scare you to come to Christ. And that's wow. not how it's supposed no. to be. No, not. We're not supposed to be scared of the devil. We're conquerors over right. him. We, right. have the, we, we are his child. Him. We have authority right. over him. Yeah. And that literally a couple weeks ago, I was like, why would they put the fear of Satan into our hearts? Like, that doesn't make sense. We should have the fear of God, but... We should we should not be scared of him. He's nothing. He's put him under your feet. Right. He's he's not. Right. I was like, this doesn't make sense. We shouldn't be scaring children. I was like seven, wow. and I was like, I was so scared to go to hell. I had friends. A girl so walked in the church. My friend was like, she's wearing pants. She's going to hell. Like, oh, really You're seven years old. Like, why are we? Scared? That was one of the laws back then. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just like, that's so sad. That's so scary. <laughs> So, you know, when we um, are doing bad things, drugs, alcohol, whatever else there is in the world that we think is pleasing us and making us happy, when we come to the Lord and we surrender and we already got rid of all that stuff, when you go back to smoking, drinking, whatever, your spirit inside is, is telling you, this is not what you need to do. Right. 
because you know the spirit of God dwells in in right. us, right? And is the one that guides us, that stops us from doing things that we shouldn't do, right. Right. and we feel guilty. Mm -hmm. But that's right. the, not the guilt. Our, our spirit is contrite because He's looking at us what we're doing after we are born again and Jesus has saved us. So that's what happens when we feel guilt. It's not the guilt. Our spirit is sad. It's conviction. It's, 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 it's like, yeah. you know, you are not of this world. Right. You belong to God. So that's, okay. that's really I, my, my experience. I have experienced that. I have done whatever. And when I try to do something like that, it's just, I feel sick. My body feels sick. But that's how perfect God does everything with us. He cleans us in a minute, in a day, in years. But he does a perfect job with our bodies and minds. Amen. I, I was going to say there's a difference between conviction and, and guilt. Guilt makes us hide. Conviction makes us do better. And when you, once you've entered into the presence of God and you've given your life over to God and you are a child of God, then all those other things that you might do that um, that might not be beneficial um, to you, the Holy Spirit is going to convict you so that you do it differently. So we don't have to judge the community. We just need to let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit needs to do. And the Holy Spirit, the closer we get to the Lord, that's when we begin to change. It's not based, we don't change because of judgment. We change because every time we're in the presence of God, it causes us to change. So we do feel some kind of way when we go back to a behavior that doesn't benefit us. Oh, and those things are temporary. Those things are not, they're not gonna fulfill us. We, because I keep hearing, well, I go back to that. We go back to that, go back to that because it's not satisfying enough. Exactly. There's a hole in every one of our hearts. And the only thing that can fill it is Jesus. Right. And all those things, the chocolate, the alcohol, whatever, it's whatever, it's never going to quench or fully take away anxiety or quench the desires of our flesh. Right. And the flesh is where, when you're talking about the Holy Spirit will convict us, those things that we feel that our flesh wants, we're not going to want those things. There, It's not going to be anything that's going to be you can go out and have a drink and you don't desire, I mean, to go out and party and there's not really a desire anymore. The desire is going away because Jesus is your focus and he, you want that more. So I've been judged all my life because since I was a little kid, I used to go to the cookies church. <laughs> Remember I told him? And I'm so glad I did because God got a hold of me in a very early age because I was um, cast away from my house in a very early age. My father told me, if you don't leave, I'm going to kill you. And um, I, 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 I had no choice. I had no choice. Here was a kid on eighth, you know, eighth grade of high school and I came to the States. Yes, I had a sister here. And I came up here and I started doing my life without a mom, without a dad, not by choice, not by choice. And now my friends, um, they, they always judge me. They always say, oh, yes, you did this and that and you have your Bible on your hand. I'm like, yeah, I do. And then they're, and then they're like, well, you, you, you're a badass. Yes, I am a soldier of God. You better know who you're messing with. You, you got a little demon on you. He's nothing for me. So you're gonna come, you're gonna come for me, just know who I am with. Right? Know who I am with. Yeah, yeah. We are soldiers. And, and God was always criticized because he never stayed quiet. He tells us to stay quiet when he's handling the game. But when he's not handling the game, sometimes you just gotta say, you know what? This is my limit. You, you put the shield, and you put the shield not as, as telling them off or whatever. No, 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 no. You put the shield as telling them, respect me. I am a child of God, whether you like it or not. And guess what? I respect that you don't want to be, but he loves you. And, and they, they, they just start like, they know they can't go beyond that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, I just want to say, I mean, I don't know. This is a weird... 
I don't want to offend anyone, but uh, like, so feel free to you know come talk to me about it because I'm this is something I still have curiosity about. But when we're talking about like alcohol and drugs and stuff, and it's like, you know, one of the things that I've like in my experience with this has been kind of like I was saying, like when when these people came around and like wow, they were doing like so much drugs and, and drinking so much. And to the point where you lose your mind and you lose yourself. But, you know, and I, and I think about like, you know, I don't, I'm not like a Bible scholar. Obviously. I don't know the Bible that well, but I think about times where like, there's so many instances where like people were having wine, people were celebrating. And that's different than like when you're just getting wasted. Like, I think you can have a glass of wine, but you, you know what I mean? And the same thing for me with weed, it's like you can have a toke. But you don't have to get super yeah. high, and, like, yeah. and that's kind of more what I mean when I say like these days. Sometimes I'm like, oh, like, did I did I just fail? Because like I had a little toe. But honestly, those are some of the days where it's like now what happens for me. It's like when I do that, like once in a while, like once a month or something like that. Like so, if I get if if I have like too many, it's like oh shoot, like I just totally went overboard. Now I'm like. Oh, like I'm high right now. I don't feel well. Like that's kind of where I feel like, oh, I don't, I shouldn't have done that. Like now I'm in danger, or if something like comes and gets me, or something like that. I get that paranoid feeling. But if I just have like a little bit, like a glass of wine, it's the weirdest thing. But like I will start praising and worshiping for like hours. I'll grab my guitar and I'll just be like really loudly like worshiping and like because I live in, I live at the beach, so people walk by all the time. People would just be standing out on my lawn, and I've had neighbors come by and say, like, like that. It's like, yeah, it's like, weird because, like, that only happens for me. Like, I can only let go of like that shyness and that, that I don't want to like encroach on anyone else's atmosphere. Like, you know, praise the Lord too loud and take anyone out. It's like, if I have like a little toe, then it's like, I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm so in it. I was going to say, so it's like, Paul says this. Paul says, Paul says this. He says, everything is uh, permissible, but not everything is beneficial. So we have to use our judgment. We have to go, okay, is this really benefiting me or is this hindering me from doing what God is calling me to do? I'm doing walking in purpose and anointing for uh, affecting change, especially now, right? We're talking about change now that we're going into a Black History Month. You know, is this stopping me from making the change in my community or in my environment? You know, so we just have to think, is this really beneficial? <clears throat> okay. Having a guarded moment. 
And Jesus went in the garden and he cried and he asked God to take this away from me and not let me go through this. But at the end, your will be done. So when I freak out and I don't act right and I'm not trusting God, then I whip myself back into shape. I To make myself feel okay and not feel like, oh, you failed God because you didn't support trusting. I say, you know what? I had a garden moment. And a garden moment, have your little freak out. Do what you got to do, but turn it around. Be human. Be who you are. Jesus did it. So it's okay. As long as we don't stay there. I always say that. Get your life with. Yeah. Sorry. I try to tell myself that if it doesn't kill you, you get another chance to get it right. So in that moment of weakness or whatever is going on, and you survive it and you get out of it, you can go back and reflect on it. I want you to know something. I need you to survive. Yes. I need you. I need to see your face. Mm -hmm. I look forward yes. to seeing you on Sunday. There is something. Yes. Yes. We need to celebrate you. We want you to know that you are of value. Okay? God put you here for a reason. And don't don't, whatever you do, you keep celebrating God because you got a line full of people that wants to hear the word of God and they're standing on your lawn and they're listening and they're right. They, they want to hear, they want to hear you celebrate God. So it's so, so important, but no pastor, we don't stay there. We, we get up and we do the best that we can and we try to do better over and over again. It's just like getting off of milk. Eventually, we go from milk to Gerber stage one. Wow. We go to Gerber stage two. And then eventually, we eat meat like we don't eat meat today. But eventually, but spiritually, that's a, that's a metaphor of how we grow in God. And we don't, she says it all the time, baby steps. Yeah. And um, well, I know we are way over time. Oh, we are. Um, so Ron Payne says we should think of First Peter five ten. After you have suffered for a little while, I will restore you. Support you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you for the song. We love you, Ron. Foundation. And Ron says, trust and believe. That's what we need to do. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we're gonna wait this up for this week and. Thanks, Ron. <clears throat> so we'll pick this up next week. And just like Ron was saying, the question to be thinking about for next week is where do we see in Scripture folks going through situations where they feel overwhelmed, where they feel conquered? And coach, if you would, on um, Indulge us. We'll just close with one scripture on page two. If you can read it real quick, one of my favorite go to scriptures, Isaiah 41 10. Of course, here we go. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. 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 I, I wanted to say something real quick. Uh, life is made out of moments, and every day is a new chance for you to be the better self that you can be. Uh, whatever happened yesterday is not here anymore. We don't have the power to go back to tomorrow, yesterday. We, we can go, and we don't even know if we're going to be here tomorrow. Right. So today is the day. Every day, every day is a new opportunity. Yep. Whoever, I, I haven't been to meetings, but whoever gone to A meetings, to NA meetings, to have siblings I have, and they tell them it is one day at a time. And that's the way it is with God. It's one day at a time. Amen. Amen.
Today is your day. All right, we'll go ahead and pray us out since we're holding up Pastor T from getting out there for us. So, in fact, family, we do have our faith and worship service starting in 10 minutes. So please, when we turn the cameras off, just get ready to dial back in. Even if we're just a couple minutes late, hang in there. So we'll definitely get you online. Good and gracious, Father God, thank you so much for this body of believers. Thank you for everything that you brought us today. Thank you, Father God, for opening our ears to hear. Thank you for those that were healed through this discussion, Father God. Thank you to those that were made to think through this discussion, Father God. We love and appreciate your word. We know that you're always there with us. And we ask for the courage and the strength to continue to always look for you first, brand new, fresh, each and every day. We pray for this in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We love you. Bye, Bye fam. All right, people, since you're a little behind, help out. Get your mic free. Take out the batteries. You may be helping us, bud. We can get this on point. And then make sure we light down the mics, please. Collect as we need.